All right, this is reviewing lesson two one before you take the quiz. So these are limits. These are limits that are indeterminate that we use algebra to be able to remove the part uh, that is undefined. So if I plug two into the numerator and denominator, it's zero over zero. I don't want you to write it down. But that means it's indeterminate. So that means there's a possibility that we could factor, which we can, so you can do a difference of squares. And then there's a possibility that this removes, and then you plug in two, and then you get your answer. So let's do some examples that look like that. And then follow with me. So plug four into the top, and it's, uh, did, I, did I make it work? I think so. Why does it feel like it doesn't work? So if you plug four into the top, it should be zero, and four in the bottom should be zero. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Because this should be like this. Isn't that right? And this, and removes, and then plug in. Oops, and I should may always remember the limit notation when you do that. And you can see the answer is seven. Something's off. I know it's off. This should say minus 12. It took me this whole time to figure that out. Now when you plug in four, it's zero over zero, it factors, and you get the idea. Sometimes there's a square root involved. So if I plug in nine and nine, you actually do get zero over zero, indeterminate. This one requires what's called a conjugate. So you change the connecting sign for the radical part. So instead of subtracting, it's adding top and bottom. Write the limit notation. And then we multiply it. So root x times root x is x. And negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. The denominator, just put them beside each other. And then notice how it now removes. There's a 1 on top. And then you can plug 9 in to get your answer. So the square root of 9 is 3, and 3 plus 3, and you get your answer. So these are like different ways something could be indeterminate. And then that's how you would solve it. The last part of the lesson had to do with the intermediate value theorem. So for the intermediate value theorem, if I give you a function, and I give you an interval, and then I say, hey, for some c value, does it exist? Oops, let me do this one. Uh, does it exist? Does there a c value that exists that can give you the answer to? And so, in order to do that, step one is to plug in zero and find the first y value. Then we plug in three and find the second y value. So that's nine take away three. And then this number, is it in between here? If it is, then it exists. That's what it means, if it's a continuous function. So yes, it exists. Then we take that number and make it equal to this function and then solve it. So we're going to subtract 2. We're going to factor it. Something we have to be careful about here. So here's the factoring part, which should be a basic. Uh, the two answers are positive 2 and negative 1. But the interval goes from 0 to 3. So negative 1 is not an answer. So that c value is 2 because that number is in between 0 and 3. The negative 1 would not be a correct answer. All right. Good luck on your quiz. Mr. G Math, over and out.